everybody, welcome back to another episode of Bottle Rocket Gaming. This is one of our uh, next episodes for uh, Teaching Talks Tech. This is the uh, mini-series instead of a series where we uh, sit down and teach uh, talks here, as well as uh, you, the viewer, how to use some of the modded Minecraft uh, stuff we have on the Bottle Rocket Gaming server. How's it going, Tox? Oh, pretty good. Well, that's a good thing. Glad you could join us. Of course, then again... That's uh, kind of in the title, so it's a good thing I joined you. Yeah, well, I'm over at your place, so I guess technically I'm joining you, but... Yeah. You know, technical, technical. <laughs> 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 All right, so just give you guys no a quick... Uh, <laughs> much pun intended, but anyways... <laughs> Um, just so you guys know, uh, just a re quick recap. Uh, we got things uh, started off here by doing the basics. We've got some uh, power generation with some basic coal fire or, w or burning generators, and then some mass rays so that Tox could uh, ore double. He also has a little side deal, also upgraded his furnaces to iron furnaces because they're a little more efficient and a little easier to uh, uh, put stuff into so you don't burn quite as much coal, which is nice. Um, so in continuing with that trend, we're going to go ahead and uh, finish out some of the basic machinery that is a good, good thing to have when you first start off. Now again, we're going down the Industrial Craft 2 branch of things. Um, a lot of people like to go Thermal Craft, a lot of people like to go other mods, and that's perfectly fine. This one's an old mod, and it's one of the ones I'm used to and I'm comfortable with, and I, and I, I still maintain... I really like the the mechanic of power, the way power works in this. I keep teasing at talking about it a little more. Um, it's a it's a really big topic to tackle, and I'm not sure if I do really good at trying to explain it in detail. Um, if you look up uh, Grumpy uh, Grumpy Gamer, uh, he does a great tutorial on. Industrial Craft 2 Power. It gives a good idea and feel for it. Uh, the other thing, too, is I think I heard somewhere in the grapevine that they're changing the power, the way the power works, in the new Industrial Craft 2 Experimental that's coming out uh, for 1.6 and 1.7. Uh, so... I'm not sure if I want to bother doing the toilet for this or not, but we'll see. In any case, so today we're going to add in a few more uh, pieces of machinery for you, Tox, and uh, uh, make things a little easier for you. The three pieces of machinery we're going to use to kind of finish out your uh, your triad or quad or what do you want to call it of machinery to have to start off is going to be the electric furnace, the extractor, and the compressor. Now, electric furnace, the reason we're going to do electric furnace is because it is basically the upgrade to these guys here, the um, uh, iron, furnace. iron furnaces. Th this guy is going to be something like 12.5% faster. It's also going to be a hoop load more efficient. It's actually more efficient to throw coal into these guys right here and feed power to the electric furnace. Um, so it, it, it actually uses things more efficiently in that regard. It also is a lot more efficient because as soon as it's done cooking, it cuts off power immediately. You know, with traditional mm -hmm. vanilla mine, uh, Minecraft furnaces and even the iron furnaces here, if you finish a stack and you're still halfway through a, a burn of a coal, it's going to finish out that coal and basically be wasted. So this way you get the most efficient thing possible. So when you're starting out, usually it'll be done earlier in the series, but uh, when you start out, this is a great way to get things going. Uh, extractor and compressor, these are both pieces of machinery that are very functional for helping you out. Uh, the extractor, the biggest thing you're going to use it for is extracting more rubber out of your uh, trees out back. We talked about before, the extractor, instead of putting the resin from the Industrial Craft 2 trees into the furnace and getting one rubber out per resin, the extractor can actually extract three rubbers out of one uh, resin. So that's kind of a nice thing. You can also extract a piece of rubber out of a log from that tree as well as from the saplings from that tree. So you can really get a lot of those trees. Now you got to kind of transition from tapping these trees constantly to just grow them up, cut them down, <laughs> throw, every, throw everything into the extractor and you're good to go kind of a thing. So that's going to definitely help you out. Um, the last a piece of equipment we're going to be grabbing is going to be that compressor. Now, the compressor has a lot of fun, and I mean a lot of functions, but one of the big ones you're going to see is uh, doing uh, turning ingots into plates. Now, you noticed uh, we had with um, oh, good grief. Uh, when we got Greg Teched, we had to use that mallet to make plates. It took two ingots to make one plate. This is going to be a one-for-one. 
so it's going to be a lot more efficient in that regard for you. But this thing also has a couple other features that are nice. It's going to be able to compress nether rack into nether brick for you. It's going to be able to compress a combination of charcoal, or sorry, coal and uh, flint into diamonds. So you can actually nice. manufacture your very own diamonds. It can also do other cute little things, like for example, it can uh, compress, uh, I think, water into like snowballs or ice or something like that. It can compress. Uh, um, I think I have enough snow. <laughs> it can also compress uh, like sand into sandstone. So long story short, it gives you a little more flexibility. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into that today. I'm gonna go ahead and start us off with um, the uh, furnace upgrade. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves one of the iron furnaces off the wall here. Make sure it's empty so I don't make a big mess everywhere. There we go. All right, so for our crafting today, we're going to go ahead and put in, uh, let's see, what is it? Electric circuit. Ooh, got to check my notes here real quick. Uh, electric circuit on top in slot two. Then we're going to put the iron furnace right in the dead middle and put the uh, redstone on either side of that. That's going to get your automatic e-furnace. That almost sounds like a Greg name. <laughs> and let's go ahead and plop these guys right up top here. I'm just going to go ahead and stack them on top of the uh, master oh, yeah. just for simplicity's sake. Ta da! Wow, all right. they almost look like robots. <laughs> Alright, so those are your first. And again, these guys are going to be a, a bit faster. You also notice you pop those guys open. Take a look in there. These are Greg Tech updated, so you have the uh, conveyor belt we talked about and uh, right. power transfer and all that. And it's got and two slots. Nice. So you have two slots to put things into. That's another nice little feature to have. So that's going to get you up running there. Now the other... Okay. Hmm? So I could just put anything that I'd normally put in a furnace, I could just put it in there. Exactly. Anything you put in regular vanilla furnace or iron furnace, same deal. And you'll see as soon as you do that, you'll see it light up. Nose working. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I, I really do love the graphics of IC. You got these guys that light up. You have the mastery as the little door closes on it when it's uh, macerating. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I, I remember if I told you last time, macerators, that thing you can do with macerators, throw a piece of cobble in there. Oh. And you'll actually uh, be able to pound it down to sand. Nice. <laughs> nice little perk. <laughs> now, there are many ways to pound uh, cobble down to sand uh, through railcraft, through uh, thermal expansion. Um, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, there is. <laughs> and some of them can be beneficial. Railcraft specifically, you can actually uh, pound uh, uh, cobble into gravel and sand and actually get a chance of, a uh, very, very rare chance of diamonds as well as gold. <laughs> so, but in any case. Yeah, that's one thing I don't like about vanilla. Sand is very uh, limited. Cumbersome to, to, to harvest, but with the new uh, update yeah. in 1.8, that could all change. Oh, really? Yeah, the, the uh, zip crew yes. actually, with the addition of the new slime blocks and the sticky qualities, the zip crew has figured out uh, how to make a machine that will basically comb the surface of the uh, uh, desert and literally pick, <laughs> pick sand blocks up and drop them on top of a mine, hopper minecart, which will turn into an entity and uh, suck it up. So you can actually have automated sand harvesting in vanilla Minecraft. Nice. Interesting, to say the least. All right. So <laughs> let's, let's go ahead and get... Uh, oh, what do I want to do next? Let's do the electric... Uh, uh, the uh, extractor. So the extractor, we're actually going to go ahead and grab ourselves a machine block and put it top dead center in slot two. We're going to put the electric circuit right below that. And we're going to wrap both sides with tree taps. And that's going to get your automatic extractor. Now, again, the extractors are the ones that are going to be really good for your rubber. This is going to, these are going to be really nice to have because uh, rubber, you just you end up going through so much of it. It's ridiculous. I'm going to go ahead and you can throw one top and bottom there if you like. I'll put mine down here. So there you go. So now going forward, whenever you have any resin. Do we have any resin here by chance? I think, we cooked, I it think all. I cooked it all, but uh, if I, just give me some... Uh... Got some wood here. I'll go tap some more. Now I'm kind of curious. As what to... in the world just happened? <laughs> I'm kind of curious if these things can actually extract. Uh, f oh, look at that! They can. So it looks like uh, these can also extract rubber from uh, 
the mine factory reloaded wood. Let's try the saplings. We get look at that. Oh, look at that. So it looks like we can actually extract uh, rubber from uh, both types. Mm. Yeah, it'll actually take the uh, rubber wood from the other the mine factory reloaded, and uh, get you uh, the rubber straight out. So that's a really good deal because you remember when we cut down those uh, mine factory reloaded trees, they were dropping uh, that raw rubber like nobody's business. Yeah. So you can easily take that stuff and uh, give yourself a good a good haul of rubber from both harvesting as well as putting in the extractor here. So that's a that's a that's a nice surprise. I did not know that. <laughs> All this right. is also teaching work tech. Yeah, I tell you. Well, now now I'm kind of curious as to uh, if the uh, raw rubber can be uh, turned into. Uh, oh, that extracts or extract into rubber as well. Let's do let's do science. Yay. That's the MFR uh rubber wood you put in the Yes, I did. And it's coming out as a uh, as ICT rubber. Yes. Kind of interesting. Oh, this is curious. The uh trees didn't want to grow. There we go. That's faster. Yeah. And I lost all my bones. Did you pay the bones? I do, actually. I don't know where those came from. <laughs> I accidentally threw them when I uh, turned some in the bone meal. I was trying to get one of these guys to grow. So That's can... Whoa, right. hello. All right, so there we go. So we got some raw rubber. So let's find out if raw rubber can be turned into three IC2 rubbers. All right. Answer is no. All right, I'll, I'll throw some resin in here. There we go. Yes, yeah, so as I say, you, you get three times as much rubber out of these guys. So that's kind of a nice perk. Yeah, I like it. We're we're, we're learning new things here, Tox. Yeah. One of that's my favorite things in the world. The <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, while we're waiting for that to uh, nice. uh, extract, let's go ahead and just do the compressors while we're at it. So compressors are going to be a pretty simple one here. Um, for the compressors, we're going to go ahead and line both sides with uh, stone. So, one, stone, not one, three, four, six, seven, and nine. We're going to drop the circuit into the bottom eight and the machine block dead center. That's going to give us our automatic compressor. There we go. We'll go ahead and drop these guys right on top of where the... Uh, Generators are. That's and not the spot I wanted to put that. Oh well. Hey, it's there. We're good. And again, these yeah. are all Greg Tech updated, so you got the interface and all the usual features. Now, again, the compressor is going to be able to, uh, theoretically, is going to be able to uh, take care of your plate issues. So go ahead and grab uh, some refined iron here. Unless Greg Tech, Greg Tech is a new way. Yes, no? Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. There's actually another uh, utility. It's called a uh, plate bender. Oh, yeah. I think you have to get one of those now. So, sadly, <laughs> that ain't going to happen. But there are like I said, quite a few recipes uh, in regards to uh, turning sand into sandstone, turning nether rack into nether brick, and again, you can make diamonds uh, using them. So there's a lot of good features, a lot of good fe uh, capacities this thing can have. Um, I have no doubt you actually will end up using it. Uh, I, I just, I, I find it humorous that you can take uh, water and turn it into snowballs. More importantly, you can take snowballs and turn them into ice. <laughs> so that's kind of a neat, neat little feature. Go ahead, Not anyway. a uh, recipe, actually, isn't doesn't seem too complicated. Although then again, a couple months ago, I would have uh, it would have made no sense at all. <laughs> is dude, there's, a... I have like chest full of uh, of snowballs at home if you want. Ah, uh, okay, well, yeah. Not was... to mention, you took out one of my. Uh... Yeah, I kind of saw that. <laughs> I was just gonna, <laughs> I was gonna come back for it. <laughs> I really do like this uh, walkway you've got here. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, interesting. 
interesting is the word. I like I like the term abstract. Yeah. Nonlinear. <laughs> All right. So you see this guy working here. He's making ice ice blocks for you from uh, snowballs. Nice ice block. Ice block. Yeah. That's a uh, that a vanilla thing. Ice block. Yeah. Okay. That is vanilla it, thing. It the, the only difference we have on this server block. is that we actually have uh, when you break an ice block instead of it turning into water, it'll actually break into ice shards. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. I wonder if you can uh, compress sheet snow into uh, ice. Nope. How'd you get that? Silk Touch, basically. Right. The Something I don't have. <laughs> I'll put a snow in your house. All right. Yeah, I don't really look like Canada. <laughs> you have snow in your house in Canada? <laughs> okay, maybe not. Get a house. roof! <laughs> People love the Great White North a little bit too much. All right, so <clears throat> yay for uh, yay for efficiency here. I don't want to do that. Generator isn't running. Ran yourself out of coal. Cause it's psycho. There we go. All right, so there you go, my friend. You've got a good basic setup for basic machinery. Uh, again, whenever you do ore harvestings, make sure you pop them into the mass ray first, and then you can go ahead and pop them into the, uh, uh, electric furnaces. And again, you can use that conveyor ability, and, uh, you can actually move things between Greg Tech adapted machines to do a little bit of automation, but I'll be honest with you, that it, it you can do it, it's not a big deal, and it's, it's nice to have, but ultimately, there's other ways to do it, they're a little bit, I don't know, easier in a sense, for setup. Are we learning not. about the next episode? Well, we are going to be working up to that. Actually, the, the big thing here uh, to point out is with this system we have now, one of the one of the rules I set down regarding IC power is uh, for low voltage here for these cable, uh, oh, these yeah. copper cables, you can't go further than five blocks. And the reason for that is they start degradating. I think it's at like twenty. I don't know, twenty some twenty point two something. Uh, percent uh, of an EU per jump they, per block they move basically so once you pass that fifth cable now you're starting to lose an EU for every bit of distance after that so you go from that 32 EU packet to a 31 to a 30 to a 29 and so on so you're actually losing power it's power degradation over distance so we can't expand out any further than that in that term so not the end of the world, but there are ways to get around this. First things first is you can actually uh, use different types of cable. Now, there is gold cable that actually has even a worse degradation, but it's made for handling higher power, which is mm -hmm. nice to have. Um, the creme de la creme, however, is the glass fiber cable. Now, glass fiber cable has a few different recipes. If you look it up in uh, your uh, NEI, you'll actually see... Uh, I'll probably just show you all of them here. One of them uses diamonds. Yeah. <laughs> so glass fiber, I'll show you real quick here. Um, so a couple yeah, options here. You see you've got glass with a diamond and redstone. You get four out of. You can use silver with a diamond, and you can get six out of it. But then you also have options to do... Let's see if we have anything else here. Uh, there you go. Uh, electrum. And you can get eight cables out of it. So there are quite a few quite a few options in that regard, uh, but it does use diamond and uh, or diamond dust, and those actually carry forty blocks before degradation starts. So if you need to expand out your wall here, we'll have to upgrade your cables, and then we'll go from there. Now that said, this is all well and hooped and good, and you've got a decent step that should work pretty well for you. However, there's going to be that one time when you're super busy and you're getting set up for a big build and you need a lot of materials. You're going to go down mining. You're going to throw a whole bunch of cobblestone in your furnaces here to make it a smooth stone. You're going to throw a bunch of ores you've mined into your macerators. You're going to throw a whole bunch of rubber into your uh, extractors. And all of a sudden, you're going to realize that all these guys here combined are going to pull more power than these generators are, can provide easily. And or the fact that you're just going to basically be burning through uh, 
uh, cola at an alarming rate, which is not exactly terribly convenient. No. So we're going to have to look into getting some better uh, uh, better source of power for you. And I just happen to know of what I feel is a really good uh, power source to upgrade to, and that's geothermal. Mm-hmm. So... Next episode, we're going, to, we're going to dive into geothermal power. The geothermal power is literally, as you would expect, running off of lava, straight off, straight up off of lava. They are extremely powerful. They got a really good output for power. Um, and as long as you feed them lava, they will go just absolutely ape nuts for you and for a long time. Now, of course, to do that, since we don't have teleport pipes and all that happy stuff, we are going to have to figure out a way to get the lava from usually way down there, <laughs> all the way up here to the geothermals. So we're going to dive into the geothermals as well as we're going to dive into buildcraft. We're going to start using the most fundamental thing in buildcraft, which is a buildcraft pipes and a buildcraft pump to pump the lava out of the pools and up to here for us. So that's going to be the next uh, next step we're going to take. Um, anything uh, on your mind beyond that, talks? Uh, no. All right. Well, as always, ladies and gentlemen, we certainly do appreciate uh, you spending time with us. and hopefully you got to learn a little bit here. Like I said, this is a really good basic setup you have here. Yeah, I, I, I always forget that Greg Tech has the ability to do that auto uh, conveyor system. And as a result of that, I never set these things up right because I would normally put, like, the uh, mass rays next to the electric furnaces. But you know what? Yeah, we can move them later. Do not forget Tox. You cannot pick any of these. Mm-hmm. If you want to move them, you've got to use a wrench, and there's still a chance you could bust one of them and turn them into a machine block, and you've got to build them again. Um, but I was looking to make an electric tool sometimes, because an electric wrench would uh, solve that problem, no problem. Anyways, as always, guys, we appreciate your time. If you enjoyed this episode or have any questions about what we've talked about here or just questions in general, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And, of course, since you're down there dealing about, why don't you go ahead and uh, tap that like button lovingly for us. We always certainly do appreciate it, and uh, we certainly appreciate you always joining us. And, heck, if you're always showing up here, you might as well go ahead and punch the subscribe button and keep following us because we do have a lot of good, fun stuff coming up here. We're going to be doing a lot more with uh, Teaching Talks Tech. We're going to be getting into a lot more in-depth stuff. We're going to be uh, changing gears here and looking at some other uh, mods and kind of blending them in with the industrial craft experience. So please stay tuned for that. It's a lot of fun. And uh, as I always say, if you'd like to talk to us in more depth and detail than just a comment on YouTube, please feel free to go ahead and uh, hop on over to the BalRocketGaming.com website. That is where we do a lot of our communicating and posting and little updates. If you ever want to see kind of the... Uh, in-between show content, if you will. Pictures being posted and conversations and happenings. If you want to keep up on what's happening with the uh, Ball Rocket 1.7 mod pack development, that's also a good place to go. You can see a lot of what's going on and kind of get the, as as I say, uh, seeing the sausage made. Uh, That's where it goes to go to. And of course, as I said many, many times before, we're always looking for good new people to join us on the server. This is a huge server in terms of all the stuff we want to do. It's way more than me and Toxin do by ourselves. We certainly do need the assistance. If you'd like to join us, feel free to hit up the forms and uh, submit an application. We'll look it over and talk with you. And again, make sure you're a good fit for us. Make sure we're a good fit for you. And we'll have you on here. You can join us and play. Uh, That's about it for today. Talks, as always, thank you. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for teaching me. Yeah, well, thanks for learning me a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys, we are out of here. Have a good day. Bye!